Welcome to the Electronics Basics series. Make sure you subscribe and click the bell icon to get notifications. I'm doing a video every day, so make sure you come back again tomorrow. So in this video, I'm going to talk about voltage regulators. I've got a selection here in front of me. So this is a 7815, which is a positive voltage regulator. 15 volts in this case. The tab is also connected to these pins, so this isn't isolated. So in this case, you have to be careful about making sure this is not connected to anything else. I'll put a pin out over the top here so you can see what the actual connections are for the 78 series devices. All right, so it's a really common kind of part. 78 series, there's 05, 9, was it 8, 9, 12, 15, I think it was 18, 24 as well. So like, anyway, there's loads of different voltages for those. Here we have a 7912. So this is like a companion pair, I suppose. But yeah, it says 7912 just down here. You kind of see it just there. Yeah. So this is a negative voltage regulator. So you put in a negative power supply and it will drop it down less. So if you've got a 15 volt going in, you might get 12 volts coming out. And this is a positive 15. So you put in, say, 18 volts or 20 volts going in, you get 15 out. You have to put some support circuitry around as well. It's usually just a couple of capacitors, not much more than that. It's pretty simple. This is a much smaller one. These are both rated at 1 amp. This one here is a 79L05, which is another negative regulator. This is basically a smaller version of that. But this is going to do, I think, it's 100 milliamps is the maximum this can do. Obviously, because there's no heat sinking or anything on it. So if you've got the really minor support circuitry or need a single chip powered, you can use one of these. I've also got this one here. It's a 78R05. This is a bit weird, this one. It's got four pins instead of three. Very unusual. I've salvaged this from something. So what's different about this one, the extra fourth pin, is this one actually has a disable pin. These have a in, out, and a common on them. These also have a disable in addition to that. So when that disable pin is activated, it actually turns off the voltage regulator, which can be handy sometimes. So this device here, the LM2925T, this is, again, a special device. It's got five pins. This is a voltage regulator, but it's got some extra functionality built into it. This one's actually got a reset output. So this can actually be used to reset a microcontroller or something like that. So after preset time, which you can set yourself using a capacitor, you put an external capacitor on it, and that donates the time it allows for the reset to happen. This will output a reset, and then that will allow you to hold your microcontroller and reset until the power supply has stabilised and your circuitry has come up to spec. And then you can release the reset on the microcontroller and then it boots up properly instead of potentially half booting up in sequence or being out of sequence with something else. So that's why it's got five pins. It's a voltage regulator with a capacitor input and a delay output for the reset line. Interesting device. I've got a bunch of these. I picked some of these up a while ago. I use them in some repairs. In here we have an AMS 1117. This particular one's a 3.3 volt. I don't even quite see it there or not. See the 3.3 marking just down there, just there. So that's the 3.3 volt regulator. So this will take, I don't know, 12 volts input, or whatever it may be, and output the 3.3 volts. And you see you've got some extra circuitry on here. Obviously this is in a module which I purchased. LED here, so your power output indicator. So that LED comes on when you've got power output from this device. So your power comes in here, you've got a ground here, and then the output is on this side, and that will run through so these pads over here, which, so that's also a linear regulator, that's 3.3 volts for microcontrollers and things like that. There's modern circuitry, which is low voltage these days. I might actually show you a typical circuit for how one of these things hooked up, although the data sheet's kind of shut too, but let's draw something. So a typical like 7808 regulator, really simple setup. You've got a power supply coming in, let's get slightly closer. So a power supply coming in, that could be, I don't know, up to 32 volts, I think is the absolute maximum these things can take. I wouldn't go anywhere near there. The higher the voltage and the more voltage it has to drop, the more heat it generates. So you don't want to be pushing the limits on these things. So then these are typically drawn as a block. So this would be ground or zero volts, and this would be the output, right? So you're in, out, excuse my awful handwriting, so that's in and out like that. So you're in and out there. You think, okay, that's pretty simple, but then you have capacitors are attached as well. So you need capacitors on these to help stabilize the regulators and this pen stopping to work. Like I've got another one. So you have capacitors on them each side. Now these capacitors will vary in size depending on what the data shape recommends. Usually you don't need a lot of capacitance because these regulators actually don't like too much capacitance in some cases. Really you have to keep that in mind. Sometimes it might only be 10 microfarad on the output. That might be all it is. And sometimes you'll see 10 microfarad specified on the input as well. And that might be all it needs. Sometimes it's specified as less than that. 
I've seen huge differences in specification for what they think the capacitance should be. Like if you look at some circuit designs, 10 microfarad would be in there. But I've also seen designs of just 100 nanofarad on the input and output. And that's been fine. I mean, 0.1 microfarad, whatever. Sometimes you have to experiment, see what works, see how much noise is there by measuring it on your oscilloscope or whatever. I mean, I'd say generally, you know, I'd usually use 10 microfarad myself. This one here may not even be needed. If you've got a power supply right here, right near this regulator, you've got your main bulk smoothing caps near it, you may not even need this cap at all. 100 nanofarad ceramic cap across there will be all you need just to help get rid of any particularly bad noise. Maybe this side as well, you might just put in a ceramic cap in as well for the same reason, just to help any noise. And sometimes it actually helps feedback. Sometimes you get noise from this line feeding back to the regulator. And that can happen too, and that could be helpful to help protect the regulator a little bit. Yeah, that's that. One regulator I haven't mentioned is a variable regulator. There are adjustable ones. So an adjustable regulator, which is really common, is the AM317. It's very commonly used. And it's very similar to the 7805, where you have a typical box set up, input, output, exactly the same as that, except this is an adjust pin here. Instead of being a ground pin or zero volt pin, we you want to call it, this is an adjust pin. And this is what's used to set the voltage. So what you do, let's draw this out really crudely. So you've got your output here, coming out. And what you do is you put a resistor divider on here, which is what I mentioned in the resistor video. And whilst I mentioned resistor dividers to create a voltage divider, that's exactly what's used on here. And depending on your resistor ratios, you can then adjust this pin to set the output voltage. This, I think it goes from about 1.2 volts up to about 37 volts, I think it is, something like that. So I think the input voltage is up to 40 volts. But depending on what you're doing, obviously the more voltage you're dropping off it, same as the 7.8 series, um, and a 7.9 series, the more voltage you drop off, the more heat's generated in the regulator. So you want to try and keep that differential as small as you can. So let's say if you're putting out 12 volts here, for example, you might only want to put 15 volts in here, or thereabouts. You don't want to go low. You still need to have a big enough offset between the input and output voltage for this thing to work. You still need to have some kind of distance there, because these aren't low dropout. Well, I think this one is actually low dropout. I should actually mention low dropout regulators. This is something I should probably cover too while I'm talking about this. I think I've explained that now. So the 2925 here, and 78R05, these two here, I think maybe this one here, AMS, triple one seven, I think that may be as well. They are low dropout regulators. What that means is that the actual voltage they can drop to down on the supply rail doesn't have to be much greater than the output voltage you're set to. I think it's only about one volt or so. Maybe, you know, depending on the device, you have to read the spec sheets and the data sheets for these things to see what they actually are for your device you're going to use. Even between manufacturers, it might change. But what that means you don't need a big differential between the input voltage and the output voltage in order for them to work and to stay stable. I think these, like the 7805s and stuff like that, 7815, these 78 series, I think these require about 3 volts in order to stay stable. Anything less than that, you're risking instability and actually the output collapsing. These, I think it's only about 1 volt difference. Or maybe even less than the AMS, I'm not sure. I can't remember for sure about that one, but definitely these are low dropouts, so... That's one of the features as well, you can set those, the dropout voltage on the regulator because if your supply voltage is, say, 14 volts coming in, you probably and you want 12 volts out, you probably can't use a 7812 because that probably won't be enough. So if you found that interesting, don't forget to click like. Also, subscribe and click the bell icon if you're not already subscribed. I'll see you in tomorrow's video. Bye.